<laughs> Hi guys, Tim's showing off his weird logo t-shirt. Oh, welcome to the Friday Live thing. Yeah, look at that. That will get, that will get loads of people on board. Um, oh, yeah, it's a Friday Live thing. I've had two hours sleep last night, so I'm basically going to doze off here and Tim's going to talk and then he's going to phone me and wake me up when he's finished. What could possibly go wrong? Right, guys, guys and gals. Friends, families, neighbours. What's, what, what's been going on this week, Mark? What did you do last night? Why are you tired? Tell me who you I saw last night. Webinar last night for the 5K guys. So I finished at six o'clock and I wandered across to Elveria. Uh, went and watched Arsenal. And suddenly, you know, Ed Sheeran turns up. Ed Sheeran starts playing. Next thing I know, it's four, half past four in the morning. And I can't think where I live. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it'd be a rough night. But anyway, you know, you know, you always know you had a you had a rough night when your Apple Watch tells you when you wake up in the morning you've you've, you've had five uh, hours standing, or you've you've closed five rings at eight or twelve of your standing ring. Mm, hang on, something went wrong there. Anyway, enough of my way. So you know life. that you you know those Apple Watch things, the sleep trackers. It's all a lie. It's like it's it's fake news, dude. Um, I don't use a sleep tracker. All never, right. use, never use a, a sleep tracker. God, <laughs> no, I never sleep enough. Right, anyway, today we are going to talk about where I went wrong in my life. Now we're going to talk about uh, productivity and progress and actually a few other bits and pieces. I came up with, uh, I found a brilliant, uh, an absolutely brilliant tool. Um, it's um, If you've got an iPhone and you're doing live videos, well, blogging videos or vlogging video, videos, it's called Vlog Easy. Uh, and uh, it only works on iPhone at the moment, it's relatively new. What it does, you talk to the talk to the camera, right? And if, every time you leave a pause in, it will already it will pre slicely go through and remove the bits you don't want. So, for example, if I'm talking here and I'm waffling on, looking at the camera, talking away, if I have notes here, I can go read the notes, and it will remove everything with silence. So it, it automatically edits it for you. And then you can just, if you, if you want to change the site, you can just flick it around and everything. Really, really good. So, so much potential on it. So, so it's, an app, it's, it, it's on the app store, yeah? Yeah, Vlog Easy. Vlog. Just get, easy. get a free account, test it out. Um, I've got, uh, it's, they've got a $147 lifetime deal going at the moment. So I'll probably get that next week. Good morning, Mr. Anders Brown. Sup supplier of fine mid-century furniture to the stars. Right. Problem? Anyway, anyway, Mr. Anders Brown, sir, missed you last night. We're talking about you. Probably at three o'clock in the morning with uh, <laughs> a few of our old friends. People are saying, "Where's it? Where's it? no? It's not been the same since dog left. No one, no one's did here till four o'clock in the morning, as we sat there at four o'clock in the morning." <laughs> Hi, Tamar. Anyway, so yeah, so that's a really good tool to check this week. Right, so product even progress. What have you been, what have you been doing, Tim? What have I been doing? As you see, I, I completely swerved at that question. <laughs> Threw it straight back at you. Uh, dear. No, uh, actually, Mark sent me a, um, an article um, a couple of days ago now, um, which was to do with the insanely slow road to building a blog and why most people give up. And um, it was written, this, a blog was written back in 2015, but obviously still very relevant today. Um, but it's about like why most people give up with blog writing. And we think that, you know, creating a blog, we're going to get instant results. Certainly the guys on the 5K method will probably attest to this. It's like pulling teeth at times. Um, you look at your uh, Google Analytics stats, nothing is happening. Nothing is at all is happening. You're getting no traffic at all or very little traffic. It's kind of like literally like a couple of visits a day if you're lucky. Um, kind of thing, unless you're doing any sort of paid media to drive traffic. And it, it can, it gives me a, like pulling teeth at time. And certainly from an SEO standpoint, running um, uh, from getting your blog going does take time. And, um, yeah. you know, I every now and again, there's a blog actually that I helped create uh, a couple of years ago for a friend of mine that to start with was getting like, you know, two, three, you know, visitors a day, maybe 10 on a good day kind of thing. And uh, we kind of left it alone. And I went back to it about two, three months ago, and it's now getting 100 visitors a day. 
Um, and we've not touched it. <laughs> we've not touched it for 18 months, but it's getting 100 visitors a day. It's like, oh crap, actually, I should really do something with this. Um, and you should say that. I was doing a webinar yesterday about getting free traffic. And one of the things I did, I looked at one of my articles that I wrote in 2017, and I, I was shocked. It had 22,000 views it's had. Right? But what happens is, so I wrote it in 2017, I revised it in 2018, I revised it in 2019, I revised it in 2020. Um, but all I do is every like, once a year, I'll send it out, I'll set it up so it goes out um, to Twitter and to Facebook nine times during the year, nine to 12 times during the year. I just get posted, yeah, just press a few buttons and it's done. It takes me 10 minutes to set it up for a year's worth of stuff. I did a YouTube video. Uh, I did a medium. I do tweets. I do Facebook posts. Yeah. And you think to yourself, do you know what? You know, this, is, this isn't working. Then, but when you look at it, you know, 22,000 visitors. So it, it, it can work. What got me thinking about all this sort of productivity and make, making progress stuff was when we were talking to Daniel last week. Hi, Daniel. Um, and he said, yeah, I mean, I've got four articles on my blog. And those are the four articles he had planned when, he, when we spoke to him 18 months ago. That's all, he, all he's done, four articles. But what he does is he spends his time and effort promoting those articles. And that, that, that's when you, you put the productivity side of things gets really, really good because you can sit back and go, you know, I tell the guys doing the 5K method, you know, do three things, get three things on a piece of paper uh, or post-it note or in a notebook and those three things every day. Just do three things, cross them off, spend an hour if you can. If you don't do an extra thing, do it, but make, just make sure you do three things to promote whichever particular co bit of content you're working on. I think that's the key is like the, the, the productivity part of it is is being consistent, being vigilant. And yes, you know, my story of the guy that, yeah, with a blog that basically we did nothing with for 18 months and so all of a sudden it's getting hundreds of visitors a day is all cool because Google obviously decided to index a particular page and rank a particular page for some weird keyword that suddenly gets loads of traffic. But it's like, if you are consistent with things, if you just keep on tapping away at it, you know, a, a, a new YouTube video or a Facebook Live, if, you, if that's your, your way inclined, you know, um, social media posting, whatever it might be, will continually just keep on, you know, it, it will snowball eventually. It's just that people give up on stuff way too early, but it re requires you to be, you know, um, to have a system each week, you know, okay, well, yeah. This this blog needs a certain amount of care and attention, and so so for me, I'll you know I'll dedicate an afternoon. It's normally for me for like stuff that's nothing to do with lean greens. I dedicate that to a Friday Friday afternoon. I'll like sit down on a Friday afternoon and work on my fast implementation blog. I'll create a video. I'll you know do some social posting, whatever it might be, um, just to kind of keep keep the juice flowing for that particular blog otherwise it just gets left um yeah. you know and and, and 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 that cut to a certain degree that's kind of the worst thing is if like you don't do anything at all with it um it will die um i i you know i think we just got lucky with the guy that had the you know the the, the blog that suddenly kicked off you know there was one particular post you know and, and to be honest with you there's there's still been some effort gone into promoting it in the background anyway via email and through sorry um through email and um social posting so yeah yeah i mean it's you, you can find that you, okay you do three things every week there's 15 things a week monday to friday now one of them one of them might work um two of them might work but the fact is, if you don't do any, nothing's going to work. And you, yep. you, you this, the, the we got, I got, I keep on, I've said this several times, and you know, I got 2,700 people from Reddit with one post. If I hadn't spent 50 minutes writing that post, I would never have got that traffic. If I hadn't made the effort to promote, I'd have never got that traffic. Um, it, so actually, I, th I think it's interesting that, that people kind of expect to like write uh, one one blog post or do one video or write one Reddit post or, you know, do a social media post, uh, Instagram, whatever, Facebook Live. And that one thing is going to kill it. That yeah. never happens. Sorry to break it to you guys. 
it, that will never happen. It's why I'll sit down like I did like at the beginning of this week. I sat down and I created eight new video creators for the ingreens. With each of those eight, I created four like um, descriptions. So long form descriptions for the Facebook ads or posts, if you like. So, you know, we just created a whole bunch of those. So we've got a whole backup of ads that we can feed through our testing system. The same goes for social media posts for Lean Greens. It's like we're posting three things a day on Facebook. And it's like I've given it responsibility for like myself and Sam and the other person who works for us. Um, the, basically, we've got to have at least three things going on our Facebook every single day. We don't know which Facebook post is going to start kicking off and driving traffic to our stuff and to our blogs on 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 our. Probably none at the moment. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like you know, we look at some of them and we go, "Oh, okay. Well, why is this one got you know um, you know a hundred clicks through to the blog, whereas this one got one? You know, and and you can analyze it to a certain degree. But the thing is, if you don't drop all those different things in, if you don't create lots of different things. You know, and keep on tapping away at it. Um, you know, the, doing one post or one video or you know one podcast is is never going to cut it. You you know, and I think that's kind of like the the lie almost that people tell themselves, and they think that you know watching all of these so called gurus talking about like you know um, having success and all this kind of stuff. Mark and I have been talking about the entrepreneur video um, this morning. Uh, check it out. We'll uh, may, maybe post yeah, the link to YouTube it. You're typing entrepreneur. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's but, but the it's best that, marketing video you'll see for a long time. It is. It's very good. Um, but it, it, it's like these the, the the fake gurus, the ones that basically say, "Oh, you just need to do this, this, and this," and it's push button, it's passive income, and blah blah blah. That's bollocks. You've got to actually like you know put some effort in and constantly chuck different assets out there and be smart about it you know, be methodical about the posts that you put out there. And that's where being productive and, you know, being consistent and, um, you know, getting things done every day, that's where it really starts to kick off. It's like people people talk about, like, you know, what we've done with Lean Greens over the last seven and a half, eight years. And it's like, I'm like, yeah, I've been, I've been talking about green shit for the last seven and a half years. And in year seven, I'm starting to see the benefits of that, and I'm starting to see the, the the effects of just constantly just chucking stuff out there and seeing what sticks. And yeah, some stuff sticks better than others, and you 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 scale the stuff that sticks, and you be smart about it. But to to a certain degree, you still need to chuck out all of that stuff. You know, I still comment. I reply to every single comment on Facebook, and I have done now for almost a year every single comment that comes onto any of our posts on Facebook or on Instagram, I re respond to. And it's those little things that build up the, the sort of the goodwill and show that you are a legitimate real business with a legitimate real product. Um, and, and that's what that's what creates the success overall. So that's what, you know, that's why, you know, being productive with your time, you know, actually, you know, to give you an idea for the commenting and uh, on Facebook, I set aside literally like, you know, eight o'clock in the morning, you know, once I've had my breakfast, I'll sit down with my phone and I'll work through all of the comments from the previous, you know, 12 hours while I've been in, in bed or whatever. And like, I do that first thing in the morning, I'll do it at lunchtime and I'll do it in the evening. Like I'll spend about half an hour going through and answering all the comments. And people go, oh, you know, that can't be good use of your time. I think it is. It's yeah. very good use of my time. I think it's, it's all about getting a system in place that you can work with. Yeah. One of the things I found, right, so it's a month today, four weeks today, that I moved into this office. Um, in that four weeks, the big thing that's changed is, isn't the fact that I sit here for five hours or I sit till two or three o'clock in the afternoon and, and just work. It's the fact that I, when I'm here, my mindset is completely focused on work. I could probably move back to, her, to, the ha to the house, to home office and work there if I made an effort to keep that mindset. So you've got to try it's sort of habit for me. And it's a, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, I don't care. I, I, 
some of the people I, I coach, I talk to them, I go, do you know what, this week you go do this, this, and this. Yeah. I don't really care if they do this, this, and this. The whole thing is that they get the system together to do something, and then do something else, and then do something else. And it's really, you try and get inside your own head. I mean, that is that bit there is a, the, your worst business enemy. It's not, it's your biggest competitor. Because it, it'll always, always find other stuff that you can do. Um, so, I mean, getting systems in place is one way of actually just taking your brain out, out of the, the equation. So, you know, I, keep, I know I keep on showing that, but the, the, the best 20 euros you'll spend is a big moleskin diary like that. I have to go get another one today. Look, where are we? Where are we? Yeah. Uh, that is generally all the stuff that I just do. Everything gets written down there. And if it's not there, it doesn't get done. Yep. It's um, non stop. So, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, yeah. anybody, I think anybody in this business who hasn't got a pen and paper next to them or within hand's reach, well, you've got, you got a little small one, mate. I've got a big one. I've got one with um, a, oh, lot, yeah. a lot of things in it. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it is the most important part. Well, for me anyway, because it get it get it allows me to get um, stuff out of my head onto paper, and then I can work on it rather than just sit down and go, okay, what am I going to work on today? Um, I probably also be fine. Siri, my mate Siri, who can come up, can wake up at the most inopportune uh, moments. Sorry, Mark, I can't do that. Siri, I wasn't asking you to do that, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> no, she really did. Um, but I, mean, I, I just now, if I'm, if I'm, if I have an idea, uh, I, I can't, I can't say it because she'll, she'll perk up. And, but I go, hey, what's your name? Uh, uh, remind me tomorrow at nine a.m. Whatever. I just give her some notes, and then I get, I get a reminder. So once again, I don't have to think of like, stuff. I forget loads of stuff if I don't make a reminder. I write it down. So yeah, and then Tamar's just asked um, about virtual to-do lists. I have um, I use um, uh, Trello, um, and it's kind of like I, I use Trello not necessarily as a to-do list, but also more of a brain dump of. Say for example, I have a Trello board specifically for um, ad creatives. So if I have an idea, an angle that I want to go for, or a particular audience that I want to investigate um, and all that kind of thing, I'll tend to put that into a Trello board. And then it, it, I, I use it like a Kanban thing where you basically go, okay, so those are all my creative ideas. Those are all my audience ideas. Let's start feeding it through and actually create the creatives and create the ad campaigns. And I have a kind of a backlog of those going on. So that when you have weeks like this last two weeks with Facebook, I don't know whether the guys um, listening have been running any Facebook ads the last two weeks. They've been shocking is the only way of describing it. Um, that, that, you know, Facebook have been changing user interface. Mark and I were talking about it offline uh, before the call about um, the Facebook user interface changing on the phone, it's changing on desktop, um, oh. things like that that are causing, um, you know, causing all sorts of issues with like my return on ad spend has plummeted and my cost per acquisition has gone through the roof. Um, so I've actually turned off an awful lot of ads, but what it's given me the opportunity to do, like I said, is like I've gone away and recreated a whole bunch of new video creatives and actual description parts. But that's all come from the Trello board that I've got of all of the ideas that I've got stacked up, ready to go. So I, when Facebook gets over its current sort of you know little bit of a meltdown, um, we can you know we can move on. Actually, one of the interesting things, I don't know whether people realize it's only really useful for people watching this live. If you're running Facebook ads today, um, the Facebook ads manager is, um, this comes direct from Facebook. I don't know, you know it's from somebody's Facebook rep. Um, basically, Facebook ads manager is gonna be broken today. That's the only way I can describe it. So it's, it's just not gonna work. So don't worry if you can't get in or stats aren't showing or, you know, that kind of thing. So that's only useful on today, September the 20th. Um, the ads manager is going to be uh, basically a pile of crap, which is 
um, slightly slightly worse than what it normally is. I mean, I, I was saying to Tim earlier, um, if it wasn't for this show, I probably wouldn't be on Facebook this week because honestly, I'm so fed up with it. It's the, what's appearing in my feed is just rubbish. And it, 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 I suppose I don't I don't even use it anymore. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think there's one group that I'm a member of, which is a local group for my mountain biking. And that's the only reason I'm on there. I'm on there is so that I can communicate with the guys that I go mountain biking with. Um, and that, that's it, really. Um, everything else can basically, you know, go take one. Honestly, it really is a pointless exercise. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tamar's just put up about the Kanban that thing. It's just, um, yeah. She says it's a good idea, but I tried it, but I would never get past the brain dump. The thing is with the Kanban is just to have, again, it's having a process of yeah. going, okay, each week you, and we're doing this with um, blog posts at the moment as well, because we've got um, somebody, uh, the member of staff we've got now for Lean Greens is de designated purely for content creation and con social media sharing and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that I really hate doing, um, but what so we, <laughs> but what we've got is like we've got a list of all of the blog posts, and we've got rid of a whole bunch of old blog posts, which were basically getting no traffic. And we're going, okay, this one we want to focus on this week. So we got that list on the first board of the Kanban, and it's like we have a process. This week you're focusing on that one. Move it into editing so that we can make it look pretty. You know, the next stage of it is like, you know, so it's actually in process. And the next part of the Kanban board is is the social media assets creation part of it. And we have like a, an adjusted Kanban board for that. Um, and it you just need to have a system beyond. Yeah, it's all well and good having the Kanban there and ha having the brain dump in your leftmost column on the sorry, the leftmost column. Um, I'm looking at the camera the wrong way. Leftmost column on your Kanban boards, but you've got to have the process for actually going through each step, and th and that that takes a little bit of sort of um, uh, just knowing on a Monday. Okay, let's look. What what are we doing? What three things are we doing? And normally in you know our office on a Monday morning, the first thing we do is we sit down as a team. We go, okay, so as a team, ha ha, and it's like having a team a team meeting and going, okay, what are the three things that we got to get done this week? What's each individual's three things? What promotions are we running? What social media posts? What's going to be the focus of stuff? Um, you know, to make sure we're all on track. And then each person goes away and they focus on their different element of their Kanban board if they've got it. Um, and that just means that we kind of, we, we're always pointing in the right direction. We're not just just doing work just for the sake of doing work. There is an actual purpose behind it, funny enough, um, uh, to ultimately for people to go ahead and buy our product. So, you know, that's that that takes a, a certain amount of, um, how could I describe it? Just, you know, just being solid about following your systems. Um, and it's taken a long time to get to that point. I've woken up on a Monday morning, I've got, I've got no idea what I'm doing this week. And you get to Friday and you go, I've done nothing, shock horror. Um, but at least having that system of like, even if it's you sitting down with yourself on a Monday morning and going, what are my three things that I really must do? To, what's going to be the focus of my week? What's the outcome that I want by Friday to make sure that I, you know, feel like I've actually progressed and pushed this business forward. And I always make sure that the things um, that I focus on are, it's, it's either about, um, uh, acquiring new customers or getting our existing customers to come by again and if and I always have that as the central focus so it, you know because you can you can get sort of drawn into the busy work the kind of like the admin side of things and you know all of the nonsense that goes with running a business on a day-to-day -day basis but it's like you still got to focus on the fact that nothing happens until somebody buys something um, so that's the way that we kind of structure our stuff. And for, you know, for, for other people, it might be slightly different, but it's like you, for me, I, I, you have to folk, have that sort of North star that you're going towards. And that was more, more, more about productivity and focus and all that kind of stuff than I thought we were going to talk about. <laughs> I know exactly. Well, something else we were, we were, going, to, we were going to touch on is we're actually sort of, we're, we're heading that direction. We're talking about obviously Facebook ads aren't working at the moment. 
Okay, there's something really weird. Oh, by the way, Ian, happy birthday if you're listening. Oh, happy birthday, Ian. Um, yeah, it's one of our Facebook ads is like pretty much rubbish at the moment. So one thing that Tim's been playing with is YouTube ads. Two ads. Now, big bit of news this week. YouTube are going to be doing lead ads. So you can have a video and you can, people will be able to click on the video and go straight off to a lead form within YouTube. Which yeah, I think, be awesome. I think the interesting part is, is that it's native to YouTube. So like people yeah. are entering their email address, their contact details, or it's actually like... Um, happy birthday uh, to you. Happy uh, birthday uh, to uh, you. Uh, happy birthday, birthday uh, dear. Happy uh, birthday uh, to uh, you. Uh, um, uh, one of the things that, um, yeah, it, it, the, the whole form is native to YouTube. And if you're logged in as, which you should normally be with your YouTube uh, YouTube account, uh, you're logged into Google. So they, they've already got all your details, your name, your email address, like all that kind of stuff. So it will, it will populate all that stuff already. So the people that actually have to type it in. And because it's a genuine Gmail or YouTube or google account or whatever it's it's a proper email address it's not like when you know the fake one that you use all the all the person has to do is press submit um so you know the whole thing with the when's that course coming <laughs> um one of the things that we've been one of the things that i've been doing things to do next week <laughs> and I, you know some of the stuff i've been doing this last week or two weeks now with youtube because facebook's been a bit flaky it's given me more time to sort of look at um, YouTube. And I've just basically been throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. So I've been running um, essentially the same video creative that was working on Facebook. And I've basically created a YouTube friendly version of that. So like the right form factor and things like that. Um, and I've just chucked that up onto YouTube uh, ads. And all I've been doing is affinity marketing. So affinity groups, affinity audiences. So the affinity audiences, you can do a certain amount of analysis of visitors to your website to see what their affinity is, what affinity audiences they're part of. So I've focused on the top ones um, that uh, are on there, but I've also been focusing on custom affinity audiences as well. So that's basically a custom affinity audience is like, I'll go onto Google and I'll do a search for my primary keyword for lean greens, that's super greens powder. What I'll do is I'll take the top 10 URLs that are there and I'll feed that into the custom affinity audience. So what it will do is it takes those URLs and it goes, okay, anybody who's visiting those or has shown interest in stuff that is related to those particular URLs, create an audience based upon that. Um, so I've been been testing out those types of things at the moment. It's pretty like um, kind of 10,000 foot view, sh throwing lots of shit at the wall, not really sort of doing too much in the way of pruning. I've just been pruning things like, you know, getting rid of uh, ads showing on kids cartoon channels and stuff like that. Um, but the, uh, and and stuff uh, and channels that are blatantly hacked. I you can have a look with TubeBuddy, you can see the subscriber count and what the how many subscribers it's had. So um, you'll see an awful lot of like uh, new channels that have got like no subscribers at all. And then in the last 24 hours, it's had like 5,000 new subscribers or something daft. Um, you know, been packing those out of, and uh, pruning those. So excluding those from showing my ads. But that's about it in terms of, um, uh, that's about all I've been doing in terms of YouTube ads up to now. And I'll be going deeper and deeper into the different targeting options that are available to me uh, as well as we go along. Um, I've got retargeting ones done as well. So, um, yeah, yeah it's... I think I, I'm noticing a trend at the moment. And that is a lot of the really big name marketers who spend a lot of money on Facebook are drifting away. I think that they finally got to the stage where they've had enough of the bullshit that Facebook's been giving people. Um, and they, they're coming back to Google and they cut and a lot of them are f focusing on YouTube. Um, it's going to be here's my, here's my projection that 2020 is going to be the year of YouTube ads. It, it's better. To, I think what it is, is, is get comfortable with the user interface. And that's that's been my whole focus over the last three, four weeks. 
because if you think about it, I've, me personally, I've been doing Facebook ads pretty much since they started doing them 13 years ago or whatever it was. Um, so I, I know the interface, I know the platform intimately. I've seen it go through all the changes. So I know how Facebook works. However, with YouTube, uh, to a certain degree, I know Google Ads very, very well. So I know the Google Ads platform pretty well, and I know the different options and what the buttons do and all that kind of stuff. But even so, with YouTube Ads, I, you still need to understand the terminology, the buttons, the triggers, you know, what what levers do what, and that's what I've been doing. And to be honest with you, just, I was, you know, following a few different courses and watching different people's videos on like how to create YouTube ads. And I was like, you know what? I could do all the learning in the world, but I, I've got to throw some money at this. So, you know, I've been spending, you know, I've, been, I've taken, you know, because we were spending a sort of three, 400 pounds a day on Facebook ads. And then I've just stripped that out completely over the last few weeks because it's been flaky. I've taken 50 pounds of that spend and gone, right, I'll spend 50 pounds a day learning about the YouTube platform. Obviously you don't need to do like 50 pounds or hundred pounds or 300 pounds a day. It's, it's more about like, you know, just throwing some money at it, even if it's a five or a day, just to learn how the platform ticks. So that when it does come to it next year, where, you know, um, everybody's going, oh, we've got to switch over to YouTube, you're ahead of the game. You know which levers, you know the gotchas, the ones that the 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 sort of you know where YouTube or Google spends all your money for you without you realizing and it's all wasted. You know where the mistakes are. Um, so that's why I encourage you to look at it now. I did see that Ian's put something. Oh, yeah, there we go. And LinkedIn, it's a content platform now with one-to-one -one follow up. Yeah, absolutely. That's another one which I, I keep on putting off because I've, yeah, never been LinkedIn, I've never been a LinkedIn user. Um, I, as in, I've got a LinkedIn profile and I've got a business profile on there, but I, I've never really run any campaigns on there. But yeah, you, uh, Ian's absolutely right. It's a content platform now. Never, It, it never used to be. Um, they've changed their focus very much over the last 12, 18 months um, to become much, much more of a content-based platform. So very much like a, a, a Facebook or a YouTube, um, and, and, and and certainly the, the types of people are on who are on LinkedIn, you, you know, the demograph of the types of person who's on LinkedIn versus on Facebook or on Instagram um, may suit your business better. Um, so certainly for, for what I'm trying to do with Lean Green, certainly we're trying to attract a, uh, a higher level of audience. We're not, we're not yeah, after the yeah, target. Find, uh, somebody who's like really good with LinkedIn and get, get yeah. them to do a show with us. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think if, if anybody oh, yeah. knows any LinkedIn people. I, I haven't got a clue. I, I mean, I've, I've, like you, I've had, a, I've had an account on there for 10 years. Yeah. And I know I've, so I've got 500 people in my circle or like a, whatever. I can't remember. I've probably not even in there for two years. Um, circle. That's, 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 that's interesting. LinkedIn live video. Yes, mm. absolutely. Um, I, I think that's, you know, certainly with the way that Facebook's gone with Facebook Live, um, Instagram TV um, or Instagram live streaming or whatever they call it, you know, and, and YouTube's live stream stuff. Certainly um, that's a big part of, you know, the other, the other channel which may be suitable for your particular niche is somewhere like Twitch. Um, yeah. Now, Twitch, most people will go, Twitch? What's Twitch? Twitch is um, one of the biggest live streaming platforms on the planet. And it's, it traditionally was set up for gamers to live stream all their gaming activity. And uh, the, the content producers would get a share of revenues from advertisers and stuff like that. Um, but now it's grown into much, much more of a, so you, Twitch, there might be like, say, uh, you know, a cooking channel Somebody's, somebody's basically live streaming themselves cooking. Um, somebody might be like, you know, reviewing cars or like, you know, mountain biking or whatever. So um, there's a whole lot of um, other niches. Um, it might be worthwhile starting to look at Twitch as being an option as well. Yeah, but then again, it's, there's only so many things you can start to do. And that's that's the thing. It's like focusing and going, focusing on the on the, the the main one. It's obviously I'm not forgetting about Facebook because that's you know that's 
keeping food on the table and all that kind of thing for us. Um, I'm allocating a certain amount of spend and going, okay, I want to explore YouTube videos. And, you know, to a certain degree, if I, if I can get both Facebook and YouTube absolutely crushing it, I can then, if I've got a system, which I, you know, I think I've getting close to actually having a system with both those platforms, I then pass it on to somebody else to do. And then I can focus on looking at some of these other channels, um, you know, further down the lines. Yeah. <laughs> Samar's just said, never heard of Twitch. Um, yeah, it's no, it's true. It's like if you're if you have a certain age, you go Twitch. What's that? Because you're not a gamer or you're not somebody who's like you know sat in front of a TV all day. <laughs> it's like or sat on their mobile phone all day. So uh, I'm I'm not suggesting that Tamar's of a certain age, but I'm of a certain age as well, where I don't quite know what Twitch is, and I had to, I actually had to look it up. It was about two years ago, a year and a half ago, I first heard about it. I was like, what's that? And um, yeah. So I'm not not surprised. Um, <laughs> uh, it was interesting. It was one of the comments I've just seen actually. Um, Tamara says more professional people on LinkedIn, and Ian's comment the reply to that was professional people are still people, and which is absolutely true. Um, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter who they are, what what status that they have, they're still you know they still go for a poo, they still have dinner, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's like they still have to eat and drink and, you know, all those kind of things. They still go out for, you know, a nice meal somewhere. They still take holidays. They still buy stuff, you know, they buy stuff more prevalently than uh, the people who are wasting all of their time on Facebook. Um, so, you know, arguably, yes, you will get better returns potentially on some platforms, depending on the type of product you're selling um cool uh, so one of the other thing i was going to say um I've, it's stuff that i'm reading at the moment because obviously mark sends me a whole bunch of things during the week um if i find something interesting i'll fire it his way as well um but there's one book that i'm reading at the moment i've read it before um i got exposed to it last year um the book is called contagious um definitely definitely worthwhile a read um i'm getting on Kindle or whatever reading device that you you do, but basically um, it's all about uh, creating content that people actually give a damn about. Um, so it's building word of mouth in a digital age is the the subtitle to it, and it basically talks about six um, six different keys uh, key factors of the content that you produce that will make it go or, or have more likelihood that it will go viral. Um, so it talks about social currency. It talks about triggers. It talks about emotions. Uh, what else does it talk about? Um, you know, the um, uh, practical value. So the content has practical value um, and all basically wrapped up in stories. So it's it's a great kind of like, um, it's almost like a marketing, a full on marketing book, like, you know, if a marketing course in a very short book. It's a really, really great read um and you know to be honest with you most of the stuff that's in here is probably being regurgitated or used in a like a you know two thousand dollar course you just need to buy a ten dollar book so i am just having a quick look at our little book club and see uh, you have got jonah, it in there jonah berger is the uh, author yeah. j-o-n-a-h-b-e-r-g-e-r -E contagious yeah i'm just gonna I'll just logged in there now and see if if, I, if it's there, I will add it to the reading list and this, add the summary contagious. Uh, so I've, I've really been enjoying it. And it's kind of like it's one of those books where you always have a notepad, a notepad open next to it with, you know, so you can take notes. Um, there's a, um, a whole bunch of notes that I've been writing about, you know, we, because we're creating more content at the moment and it's like, you know, say for example, um, we want to create some videos and I want to create some, have some B-roll created. So B-roll video for like the video ads that we're, write, we're creating at the moment. So I want to kind of create um, sort of emotions around, say for example, what people's emotions are around eating vegetables. Um, so it's like, you know, the, the kids pushing the, the Brussels sprout around his plate or, you know, um, somebody picking lettuce and, tomato out of their burger mark thompson um, <laughs> <laughs> um okay you know, that, is, 
contagious to October's um, summary list. So well, well worth it. Um, I've yeah. got a whole a whole host of other books which I'm reading at the moment, but I'll, that one's the one I recommend. Um, stuff I'm watching at the moment. Um, uh, stuff I'm watching at the moment. I'm watching an awful lot of stuff on YouTube. So the Tube Buddy um, videos are, are superb. They tend to be obviously very focused on how to use Tube Buddy. Uh, what was the other one that you sent me, Mark? Uh, um, morning Fame. Morning Fame. Yeah, so a German guy I or a Dutch guy. That. Sorry? Uh, it's a Dutch guy or a German guy, Nico I think. German. German. So, I, I, um, you know what I love about Morning Fame? It's designed how I think. Mm. Um, because it's where well, the other ones give you, they show you what's happening. This shows you what's happening and says, this is what you should do next. Okay, you should work on, work on, just focus on getting more engagement, focus on getting more likes on your videos. So if you are watching this on YouTube, down below, click the subscribe button, click the bell next to it, and you'll never miss another one of these shows. Make sure you like, comment, and share. There you go, did it, woohoo! <laughs> but it's, it, uh, those two channels, I've been watching loads, actually. I've actually been watching them on my TV, which is, you know, so cause most people have got these smart TVs now. Hey, wait, wait, wait. You are risking a full 40 or 55 inch Ty Lopez on the ads. You don't want a, you don't want a big Ty Lopez. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, you're right, actually. Um, but no, I, I've, I've been watching, I say, Morning Fame and Chew Buddy. Those are the two um, channels on YouTube um, that you want to be watching. Some really, really great stuff on there. Um, you know, the only other person I'm watching at the moment, which is, he's a bit weird. He's gone a bit weird at the moment, which is um, my, uh, uh, I'm, I'm his number one biggest fan, but uh, Ryan Daniel Moran with from capitalism.com. Um, yeah. he's, gone, he's gone a bit sort of left field at the moment, but some of his older stuff is superb. So go check out um, capitalism.com or Ryan Daniel Moran. Um, another great watch um, on, on YouTube. So those are the three which I'm watching. So Ooh. that's what I'm reading and what I'm watching. There we go. Excellent. Right. Shall we knock it on the head? I think so. Mark, Mark's running out of steam, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've run um, out of steam after about two minutes. <laughs> I don't think I had any steam to start with today. Yeah. And it's the Rugby World Cup starting as well. Oh, that's a good, good mm. point. Um, what's, uh, of course, it's Japan, so everything's going to be early in the morning. That's great. Good times. Is that 10 o'clock for, for, for me over here? It's like 10 o'clock in the morning and lunchtime. The games are on. Are they? Okay. So, okay. Not too bad. Yeah. So it'll be lunchtime, pizza, um, beer, then back to work. So predictions for the uh, Rugby World Cup. Who's going to win? Um, England, of course. <laughs> Just see the comments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If you're listening to that on the pop, on the, listening on the podcast, you missed that one. <laughs> yeah, watch watch the YouTube video. Yeah, um, okay. watch it on YouTube and remember to like, subscribe, <laughs> share, comment, and click the bell. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, rugby World Cup for the next couple of weeks. That'll be good. Yeah. Who's gonna win? Um, we will need to probably adjust the time of this next Friday. I don't, I know England are playing on Thursday. Okay. At 12.45, so I, I'm not, it probably, probably won't need to change the time, but we'll, we, will, we will check. So, I'm sure we'll be fine next week. Do, oh, do, uh, do it in the afternoon with a few beers. that will be a make even better show. Uh, I am here next week. Sorry, I've, I'm, I'm off to London during earlier in the week, but uh, I'm actually going to, well, a, an, I'm going to I'm going to an event on Tuesday. Oh, is, is it a free um, entrepreneur event? No, it's definitely not a free one. Cost me a lot of money. Um, <laughs> um, I'll tell you about it next Friday. I think it's it's a, it's an interest. It's a it's a real departure from a lot of the events that I've been to over the that years. Is the best joke we've had. Australia, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Actually, Australia. Do you know what? Uh, right now, I'd put I'd put um, Scotland yeah, ahead of on. Australia. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, yeah uh i'll tell you about the event that i'm going to on tuesday tuesday wednesday i'll tell you about that next friday because it's it's a, it's a real departure from a lot of events that i've been to before um in the it's it's a it's a real small group it's like 10 people kind of thing 
uh, 10 different businesses in the room. It's, it's kind of like a mastermind kind of thing, but not. Um, a little bit like the um, stuff that Andre did. Uh, yeah, similar kind of thing. Um, but this is this is all about. It's not it's not a digital marketing thing. Although the guy that's running it is from a digital marketing company, um, and it, it is. Ooh, um, but it's also it's all it's all about leverage um, and leveraging different assets in your business, scaling, uh, growth, um, basically exiting businesses, uh, exiting and buying businesses, that kind of stuff. So. Which has always been an interesting sort of sort of thought for me. It's like I, I've talked about it before very briefly. I'll just do this very, very quick. So I'm obviously conscious of time. But um, the whole idea of um, if if you can find your own traffic stream and own your own traffic stream, uh, you're in a much stronger position. So say for example, there's a blog that's getting a hundred thousand visitors a, uh, a month, for example, that is in your niche that you could buy that particular website and put your own adverts to your own products on there that then you own the traffic stream you own the the, the traffic source it means you you don't pay a penny essentially for the traffic other than the the bulk payment for the blog in the first place place but if it's getting a hundred thousand visitors a month it actually might be a well worthwhile the kind of exercise to see if people are interested in selling you that asset or partnering with them on it so yeah, just some different stuff in that respect. And I'll we'll leave it at that. that. Next week then. Leverage. Leverage. Dame Edna Leverage. Dame Edna Leverage. Uh, right. Dear, really. right. That's it. Right. We'll speak to you later. See you guys. Thanks. Bye.